Hey, how y'all doing today? Uh, today we are going to be looking at forward shells. So this one's going to build on a previous video I've done where we looked at the make netcat make FIFO shell. Um, and if you haven't watched that one, you might want to go back and do that because I'm going to be building on it here. Um, so this video is going to be about forward shells. Um, so what's a forward shell? Um, this is a technique that I first saw Ipsec put together um, in a video years ago, and uh, I always thought this was a super cool one. Um, it's a bit of a hack that where you use a pipe um, a pipe file to convert remote code execution into a persistent shell. Um, and so we think, you know, think like you have a web shell or some sort of um, SSTI vulnerability and you want to convert that into persistent shell. Um, the most common way you do that is just to go ahead and get a reverse shell. Um, or you could even create a listener and try to connect into it. But there's going to be times where doing that is not practical um, or possible. So if egress filtering at the firewall is blocking your outbound traffic, um, or if you just don't want to create the risk that comes with uh, creating a new connection out, that can make it much more easy to be seen. Um, this is a way to go ahead and do that without creating additional connections. So um, much like the make FIFO netcat shell, we're going to use a pipe um, and a single shell process to get this persistent shell. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and dive in. All right, let's go ahead and dive in here. Um, so for the sake of uh, demo today, we're going to work off of uh, this other VM I've set up, uh, 165, right here. When you go here, it's hello world. And this is like a really fancy website. And we've discovered through whatever means that if we happen to put CMD equals ID here, uh, we've got command execution, right? Um, now in the real, you know, in the real world, or even in like a CTF where you're doing hack the box, you're not gonna see something that simple probably, but um, pretend we've got some sort of command execution. It could be a SSTI, it could be a, uh, command injection, some way to we can run commands. That's what's important. So um, to make this easier to work with, we're going to come over here and we're going to curl it. Um, I always like to then do a dash s and make see if we can see if we can do it as a post request. See, like this still works there. Um, the other thing, just real quick to play with while we're doing this, is on the, I've actually been using lately a program called pup where we can now do pup uh, code which will pull the stuff between the code blocks here. Uh, and then if you just do that, it'll actually give us the tags. I don't want the, I don't want the code tags. So we do text like that and boom. Now, pretty simply with one curl command, I'm, I'm running commands like execution. Like that's awesome. Cool. Okay. So what would I do here? Normally um, I'd want to get a reverse shell out of this. Right. Um, and so here's the problem with this target is if I do, uh, let's see, if we open this up, we'll do netcat minus first, we should figure out what our OP is. I have, and big, and we are uh, 10, 10, 10, 164, of course. So if we do netcat minus LVMP, 443, we come up here and I'm just gonna make it even, like start super simple and just do netcat 10, 10, uh, 10, one, too much, too much uh, hack the box there. 164, 443, um, we might wanna try, the other thing we, you know, we wanna make sure we try here is, we might have an encoding problem so we can do data, URL encode, make sure, make sure that works. I always like to just like start with a working one and then go in here and now I can do things like uh, LS minus LAH. So that's working fine. Um, so now we'll do netcat 10, 11, 164, 443, and we're getting nothing, right? We can come down here, we can do it even, um, sudo TCP dump minus NI, not ton zero, what are we? ENS, there we go. Uh, ICMP. That so now we're looking for ping packets, right? And so we can come in here and we can do ping minus C1 on that, and nothing. And not only that, we get the result. We we can't we can't talk to um, ourselves. In fact, it might be kind of interesting to see. I can put this back up. I wonder if we can get the error message off that netcat command. Um, if we do two, do that to one. No, that's not gonna work. We need to we need to encode this, I think. So 26. Ah, okay, doesn't matter. Um I know because I set this up that uh the firewall's up on this host. Um so we can go over uh well we'll, we'll go look at it in a minute, but you know, the firewall's up, it's not allowing any outbound traffic. This is something you'll see time to time in a hack the box machine or maybe in the real world. Um and so what are you gonna do about it is the question. So we could live off of this sh uh, shell, you know, we've got commands we can do, we can do LSLH, we can do um, 
Come over here, we can we can start to oops, let's see, let's leave it L A H on root. We can start to see that. Um, so we can start to walk through this. It's just kind of a pain in the ass. Um, and the other thing is, there are some things where you know more. Well, first of all, I can't change directories, right? So if I do C D uh, slash L S, that's fine, right? But if I now do, you know, when I come back here and do print working directory, I'm back in bar w um, If I put the I put the uh, cd slash there first, now I'm in slash, but every command is just going to run from its own um, shell process. And that's a pain to deal with. More importantly, I can't, let's say I knew, let's say I figured out the password. Also, I don't even know who we're running as. Who are we running as? Probably dub, 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 dub data, I'm guessing. Yeah. So let's say I know the password for dub, dub, dub data, and I want to like sudo minus L, you know, like that. It just fails. That's not going to work without a full uh, PTY. Um, and if we try to do that here, it, it's not going to work because even if it does work in the shell session, it's not going to it's not going to do anything. So um, this is why we need a forward shell. So let's uh, let's talk about what that is. I'm going to grab my picture here, draw a nice little diagram, and so this is built in four parts. And so there's really four things. Yeah, the four things I want to talk about. The first is this pipe. Um, we're going to create a pipe somewhere, it can be anywhere. In this diagram, it's temp input. We can literally call it anywhere. Um, and we talked about pipes in a previous video I did. Um, hopefully I'll remember to put the little tag thing up here in the in the in this video so you can click over to it real easily. Um, go back and watch that video if you want the full explanation of pipes. Um, but we're gonna have this pipe and then we're gonna pipe, we're gonna uh, run tail minus F on this pipe so that the output is going into an SH process. Um, SH is gonna run stuff. Um, and I'll go into exactly why tail and f is important in a second here in a demo. Um, the output of that, we're going to redirect into a file, and then we're going to use the same RCE that we to both write commands into this pipe and then read results out of this file. Um, and so I'm going to push this aside and we're going to do a little demo here. Um, we'll start, let's see, we'll start locally, right? So we can do make FIFO uh, in, and we can do touch out, and now we've got those two files. I guess all I got. Oh, I've kind of been playing around with the command as a file. Ignore that for now. Um, and so I can do things like come up here. Oops. Do this. Do down a little. I can do things here like cat in, and it just hangs. And if you remember anything about pipes, they're just going. They're nothing is going to um, come out until they're both open for reading and writing at the same time. So I can do something like echo um, like this video, and I can pipe it into in. And then you can see it comes out, it goes into in, and at the same time it immediately comes right back out, and then it's done. So the pipe is cool. Okay, but so now I want to uh I could even do something like here where I do cat in into sh, and I come down here and I instead of like this video, I do um who am I? And you can see it went in here and the pipe it was read from the pipe into sh and it, it left. Um, but what we want is a persistent shell session, right? We don't want to, we don't want this to die. And so we're going to use the uh, tail minus F on the pipe. And tail minus F is really cool. If you've ever um, wanted to like watch a log file, that's where I typically use tail minus F. And what it does is it's going to re spit the end of the file out, like tail usually does. I think tail by default does the last 10 lines. Um, but then with the dash F, it's going to hang there and it's just going to hold that file open. And anything else that's written to that file is going to then dump out. And so this is cool because what we're going to do is we're going to hold our pipe open. And so even after we write to it, the pipe's just going to still be open waiting for more stuff to come in, which it can then read out. And those things are going to go into that SH process. So now when I come down here and I do uh, who am I into it there, I can do it again and again. And I can do, you know, I can come down here and change the command, and I'll print working directory, and now I've got, you know, that going on. Okay. And so on, right? So now with this command, I've got something that's just going to hold open waiting for me to write to it. I can write to it as many times as I want. And then every time I write to it, the output's going to go into this SSH process and come out. Um, now, when I'm doing this remotely, uh, I don't want this to be spitting to a console because I don't have a console. Um, so I'll probably, I'll then direct it to, you know, out. And so now when I come in here and I do uh, print working directory to in, and then if I do cat out and read it, I've got the result. Um, and so what we're going to do, and I'll, I guess we'll flip over in a second here and do this on the remote one, is we're going to create these files and set this all up, and then we're going to write commands to the in file, and we're going to then read the results out of the out. Uh, and we're going to want to clear the out, too. I'll show that in a second. So 
All right, let's switch. I guess we'll switch to remote. It seems, it seems like a good time. Um, so we're back to, do I still have my curl up here? Yeah, here, okay. So I've got my curl. Um, and so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, go ahead and actually, you know what, I, oh, this is what I want to do. I wanted to show, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and we're going to come over here to this one. Um, I guess we can take a quick, quick, quick look on, this is target uh, running, I'm running as a dummy user. Um, but there's, let's see, so we can cat this um, in case you're interested. Basically, it's just looking if the command thing is set, then it's going to print out the results. It's going to do a system. Cool. Um, we're going to do a watch command because I, I think it'd be useful to see this as it happens. Um, we're going to do minus n1, so it happens every one second. Then D to highlight uh, changes as they happen. Um, we are, let's see, we're going to do ls minus lah on dev shm because that's what we want to look. Um, let's put some space in there. And then the other thing I wanted to look at is uh, PS tree minus P on, ooh, we're gonna need, uh, hold on, we'll uh, kill that. Um, PS and AUX dub 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 grep patchy. So I want this one that's running as root because it's gonna be the parent right there. Okay, so back here and we'll put this PID right here. Cool. So what we have here, is we're gonna watch for any files written in dev, H dev shm. And we've got the uh, process tree for, this is the main Apache process running as root. And then here's all the workers uh, running as uh, www data. Oops, I didn't mean to make that small. Let's make this small. So we've got this running on the side here. So now we can go over here and if we do um, go back to our curl, we can do something like uh, sleep five. And when this runs, it kind of goes off the screen here, but this is the problem with trying to make the text visible and big. Let's make it a little, let's try it again. So you can see a shell process comes out. That's from the system call. And then the sleep is happening here. And then it goes away after a few seconds because that's what we told it to do. Um, so let's go ahead and build out our forward shell. So the first thing we want to do is we'll do make, make FIFO uh, dev shm uh, in. And so you can see over here, our pipe has been created as in. And now we're going to do, oops, I didn't really need to delete that. Mm -hmm. Let's see, we're going to tail minus F on that. And we're going to pipe the results to dev shm out. Very cool. Okay, so now this, this is useful because look, we've got this Apache worker that has now got a shell process running tail and it's just hanging there. Um, and that's not doing anything. So now we can come in here. We can actually kill this quest because it's just going to time out. It's never going to actually send anything back. Um, now if we come in here and we do echo, we're going to do uh, ID into dev shm in. that and now we want to read uh what do we want to do oh we want to let's see hat dev shn and that did not work where did i Tailed in, oh, well, okay, we can see why it didn't work. Up here, I did it, it's reading from in and it's just writing it to out. I forgot to put the shell in there. So you can see it did, it read from in the ID and it wrote it to out. Um, let's go ahead and one thing, go ahead and let's see. So we will go back here and try this again. Um, this time we'll pipe it into SH and then put it to out. So now we've got two of these things going, but okay. I, I should have noticed that no SH showed up there. Um, okay, uh, we can kill this. Now when we come up here and we put it to, I wonder if this is gonna screw things up. Um, I might need to re-quickly, I'm just, I'm just realizing now that I've got two different things trying to tail um, Apache, let's go over here real quick and just do kill this. We'll do sudo service Apache2 uh, restart. Now, if I was on a real, um, if this was a real target I was trying to work off of, uh, and I obviously can't come on and just restart the Apache service, um, I would just create new files um, in and out. I could do in to and out to, or pick random numbers between one and a million. Um, 
I need to, so anyway, I need to get, uh, but for the sake of demo and trying to make this clean, I'm gonna just restart it, get the new PID for Apache. We're clean, we're working here. Um, in fact, I can even, might as well, let's see, remove dev shm star, I'm probably gonna put another sudo. Okay, so now we have a clean thing. We'll come back here, take two. Um, we're gonna make in, looks good. We're going to now, this time we're gonna, we're, we're tailing in into sh and then into out. And there we go. So now out exists because it's been open for writing. Uh, now there's our sh with tail. And we can kill this, Let's make this full screen. Um, so now we can come in here and now we just need to write our commands. So we'll echo uh, id into dev shn in. Like that. And now we will cat out and we've got the res we've got execution there. Okay, so we've done all this extra work just to have to read a file, right? That's that's is that useful? Um well, it is because we're going to now watch what we're going to do next. First of all, if I run this again and I come back here and then get it. Now you can see it's in there twice. Um so one of the things I'm going to do is when I when I read shm, when I read out, I'm going to then just echo minus n for no new line into dev shm out. So that's effectively clearing it, setting it back to zero. And you can see when I did that up here, it went back to zero. Um, so now if I did it again, I just get an empty file. Um, so I can do, in fact, I can even make this in one line. Now I've got my ID and then I will curl it up here. Like this. And you can see now in one line where I just have to change this ID to, you know, who am I? And you know, in fact, the other thing I can do since I'm doing up arrows is, well, okay, we'll stop there. That's good. Okay, so why is this useful? Um, we Let's pretend we knew that uh, the password for www.data was password, and we wanted to see what it could sudo. Um, I showed earlier how if I try to run sudo, I just get nothing back. Um, but if I do sudo minus L here, um, actually, I'm still going to get nothing back. We'll see that um, nothing comes back. Um, what I can do here is I can actually upgrade myself to a full PTY. Um, so lately, I've really been into just using script. Uh, dev null is the file I want to write my script into. And I want to run the command bash. And now you can even see, if, you know, the script file has started. This is, I ran this all in one command, but so I read up here, I ran, I wrote to the file behind the scenes that ran something. Um, then I'm fetching the results of out right away. And you can see the results are script started, file is dev null, and here's a prompt. I've got a full prompt here. Um, if I come over here, let's see, I'll make this bigger so we can see. Um, you can now see my my shell. This is uh, this is what's being run from the system in PHP. Here's the tail into shell that we're running our that we're running off of that. Um, that is now running script, which has its own sh running bash because bash is the command I told it to run. Um, so you can see, and now anything I run under that, it's going to show up here. So if I do um, now, if I do, let's see. An easy one. I'll, I'll do another just for the sake of demo. Uh, sleep five, and we'll come over here real quick and make this big. And you can see now here's the sleep showing up as a child of Bash. Um, so we've got that working. Even cooler, we can now do delete this sudo minus l, and the response is what's the password for www data? Now I don't even have to. This is not anything, oops, this is not anything fancy. I'm just going to send my output in here. My password is password and it worked, right? Uh, now it worked and it told me sudo can't run, can't actually run sudo on this tar, www data can't run sudo, but I was effectively able to actually enter into a, a full PTY and run, run sudo minus L um, through this web shell. And so that's where this gets really powerful. Um, with that all in mind, the next thing I could do, I'm not gonna actually go through it in this video, um, but I could, let's see, ipsec uh, forward shell. Um, this gets kind of tedious if I'm doing this over and over again through curl commands. Um, I could write this into a bash script probably, but um, ipsec has a good, um, in the past when I've done this, I've used Python and ipsec has a good uh, starter, I'll say, for where you could work on this. Um, what he calls forward shell.py. Um, and this is probably the strategy I'd use. I think there's a few places I'd clean it up a little bit, um, maybe put it into a CMD terminal uh, class. But 
Um, basically, let's start at the bottom. We've got a prompt here. Um, it creates this web shell object, which we'll go into in a second. Uh, and then it enters a while true loop. It's going to read in from the prompt, read in from your prompt. It's going to prompt and then you read in the command. Um, if the command is upgraded, it's going to call this upgrade function. Otherwise, it's going to write the command. Um, and when you call upgrade, it, it gets rid of the prompt. Now that makes sense because we saw now bashes, now the, the, for, the remote process is actually sending us back a prompt. So we don't need to see this, you know, please subscribe prompt. Um, all right, so what does this web shell class do? When we create this class, the first thing it does is, you know, it's, it's got some things here. Um, this self URL, it says modify this URL. So in this case, we would put in like 10, 10, 10 1, 1, 1, 60, 5, um, and then we could do like question mark, equal, question mark space, the stuff, or we could, you know, build into a post request somehow. Um, I guess, we, well, I guess we would just leave it as that. Um, you're gonna have to tweak the script a little bit to make it work on your process, but let's, anyway, what's it doing? Um, so it's session, it's creating a session that's a random five digit number. Um, it's then going to create input.session and output.session. So it's creating the two files that we need. Um, well, it's creating those file names for the moment. Um, then it's going to make name pipes is going to be equal to this command, which is it's going to create the self.standard in thing. And then it's going to go ahead and create this tail that thing into a bin sh uh, with two minus one. I didn't show that in mine, but that makes sense. You're going to want to redirect your errors also back into standard out. And then all that goes into the file. Um, so then it's going to run, run raw command on that file, on that thing. And with a timeout of 0.1. Um, you need that short timeout because, as you saw, we would just hang indefinitely otherwise. Um, and then he's going to set up a read thread. Um, and that is it. That's So when he starts the class, those are the things that gets done. It goes ahead and sets up the pipe for you. It sets up the output file um, with, the, with the tail sending the pipe into sh and then the output going to the output file. Um, and so from there... It's now running this read thread. And so the read thread in the background is literally going to, while true, uh, just get, it's going to get output. Basically, it's going to be catting this command. And whenever it returns some actual result, it's going to print the results. Um, it's going to then send the command to clear the output. And then it's going to sleep for some period of time, which by default is 1.3 seconds. Uh, so now what you're going to do when you get run raw command, let's see, what was our write command sa write command so when i put something into the terminal here it's going to be passed into write command which is it's going to be base64 encoded um and then it's going to send the command to the web shell that says echo my base64 stuff uh, decode it and then write it into self.standard in um and then it's going to sleep for a second and so basically effectively what i'm doing here is every time i type something in it's now handling for me okay i type id it sends that up so that ID gets written to the in file. Then that gets piped through, uh, gets tailed into uh, and then piped into SH. That SH results get put into output. And then within, you know, based on this one second, 1.3 second sleep going on here, very soon it's going to read from that file and then print those results to the screen and clear the file for me. Um, and so, you know, this is a good uh, base for a command. Now, what am I going to do? What's what do I need to edit to make this work for me? Well, I'd have to come into this this run raw command thing. Um, you'd have to, you know, make this run your command. So right now it's set up to um, send some sort of payload to what does it mean? Oh, the payload is actually in a user agent here. Um, oh, because he was using it in Shellshock. Um, cool, but you know, depending on where you're going to use it, you want this to just return the result. You know, run a command, take in stuff that runs your command, and somehow return the result um, of the output. And so for us, you know, we would therefore get it. We 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 push it to our web shell as a you know with cmd equals. Uh, we would then filter out all the garbage around it so that all that was there was the um, stuff between the code, and then we'd send that back. So I'm not going to do that here because I think. Um, it could take longer than is interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's a forward shell. Um, hopefully that was interesting. And uh, hopefully it's a tool you'll get to use. We It's not something we show that often, but um, I know, I can't remember which box it is, but I'm, I'm still trying to go through old machines that I solved um, way back in the day before I had a blog and write blog posts for them. Um, 
And I know there's one coming up that uses this, so I wanted to have this video ready. So um, with that, thank you so much for sticking around to the end. Um, YouTube stats are very depressing. They show like only like 10 to 20% of people actually stick around and watch till the end of the videos. So the fact that you're still here um, means I appreciate you. So uh, thanks for being here and uh, I will talk to you next time.